All right, I'm printing with the TiVo Tornado uh, printer I got off Craigslist, brand new, never used. It was in the box since the guy bought it. Uh, this printer doesn't come with a spool holder, so I've got a couple S hooks hanging off a bookcase with a brass rod going across them, and that's holding the spool until I can calibrate it good enough to print a spool holder. So here's the actual printer. Um, people are talking about changing out the stepper drivers to make it more quiet. Um, actually, I am kind of surprised that I don't think it's noisy at all, at least not compared to my current printer, a Robo 3D. I am planning on buying those stepper drivers anyway, as well as changing the hot end to an E3D V6, since I had a spare one for my Robo 3D. Um, sorry if the lighting might be strobing in this video, it looks like the lamp I have pointing at the uh, printer here is doing a little strobe. Um, yeah, uh, it went together fine. It's, you know, it's a TiVo Tornado. It's an inexpensive printer. But it's a much larger format than the Robo 3D that I'm currently using. So, this is my second attempt at printing a calibration cube. Uh, the biggest problem, of course, is getting the first layer right, which is basically getting the bed level and to the correct height so that that first level of filament gets pushed into the bed enough to stick well to the bed but not enough to actually deform the print and my first attempt failed uh, I got about you know, maybe a quarter of the way and then it came unstuck from the bed so starting again but that's just to be expected with a new printer getting the first layer settled and learning how to adjust it and everything so yeah, pretty happy so far, considering that I got uh, eight spools of PLA filament and this printer for $175, which is less than this printer costs by itself. So hopefully I can get this printer going and upgraded to the point where it prints well and reliably, and it'll be the printer that I print anything large on. Um, right as I was waiting for delivery of another printer that I bought to replace the Robo 3D, um, I've ordered a Prusa i3 MK3S kit. Um, I've got that now. That shipped before I had a chance to get this working to make sure this worked. Um, I was thinking of canceling that order, but because they shipped it before I had a chance to get this working, I've decided to keep both printers. Um, the Prusa and this TiVo Tornado. So the TiVo I will use for anything, as I said, that's really large. And the Prusa I will put where I currently have my Robo 3D next to my primary computer, and that'll be the one that I print, you know, pretty much anything that'll fit on it. Uh, its print surface area of the Prusa is a little bit smaller than my Robo 3D, but not by much. So most of the stuff I print will probably print on it fine. So, yeah, just through a series of <clears throat> unintended uh, events, I ordered a Prusa, and then I found this TiVo on Craigslist before the Prusa shipped. So I'm, I currently have three 3D printers in the house. The Robo 3D is working and as reliable as ever. This TiVo, as I said, this is me just trying to get the uh, calibration cube to print, and then I'll print a spool holder for it. And the Prusa, I am still in the process of putting together. I got it as a kit, and I actually broke one of the parts as I was putting it together, so I've had to wait uh, for them to ship me out a new part. It was only like $7 for the part plus shipping, 6 to 10 day delivery, so it should be here any day. And then I should get that one up, and I'll have to go through the same thing with getting that calibrated and set up, too. Down on the floor here, you can kind of see I've got a bunch of uh, parts to replace the hot end with the E3D V6. Um, 
I've printed all the parts down there on my Robo 3D. The spool holder for this TiVo Tornado is just a little bit too big for my Robo 3D. So that's going to be my first true test of this TiVo Tornado once I get the calibration cube done and make sure that it's uh, fairly accurate. So just a little video about a hobby other than my arcade hobby. 3D printing hobby. I kind of get focused on one hobby for a few months and then I lose interest for a while and focus on another one. So currently the 3D printing hobby is my main focus right now. So I hadn't posted a picture of any 3D printing for a while or a video. So I thought I'd just make a quick one to throw up there. And Oh, also this stand. <clears throat> this is a reproduction antique ice box. It's not a real antique ice box. It's made by, well, I don't know who makes them. It's the label is white clad. And that might be the company that makes them. It might just be the company that makes the brass parts. I don't know. They make these like nightstands. They make TV stands with a swivel top. They make larger ice boxes and they all look really nice. But they are not antiques. They're they're fairly cheap. I got this one I think for 25 bucks off Craigslist. And unfortunately, it's too small to fit the printer. But I had some MDF. I uh, just had a scrap that happened to be the perfect size. Uh, you can see in the front there, there's a little block of wood. I've got blocks of wood on all four sides, so the top won't slide off in any direction from printer vibrations. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the stand I'm going to keep this on. I'm kind of cramped for room in my uh, hobby slash computer room here. Got my electronic workbench over there. Then I've got this bookcase, which I kind of want to get rid of, but it's got some more hobby stuff and craft stuff on it. So, yeah, I need to figure out what I'm doing with this 3D printer, if it's going to stay in this room, if it's going to go somewhere else, if I'm going to get rid of that bookcase and push this or another stand up against the wall, which is what I'm thinking is going to happen at this point. But yes, too many hobbies, and a lot of them take up a lot of space, so... That's it for this video.